All right, Troy, um, riding off the heels of uh, Carifta, mm -hmm. um, new challenges ahead for the Bermuda National Athletics Association. Uh, we have youth championships coming up and the other um, major events. Um, how are we looking as far as um, preparation, number one? And number two, how is the attitudes and the moods of those athletes still involved in track and field? I think it's, um, yes, we are moving forward. Uh, Carifta was a stepping stone. So the athletes feel very, very confident. We have a couple of athletes, three athletes up until this moment have qualified for Raw Youth. So let me just go over what we have for the coming summer. Uh, first, we have CAC age group. That's going to be in Curacao. That's for athletes between the ages of 11 and 12 and 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at sending athletes to that event. Uh, I'm having a meeting this coming Saturday with the parents and with the athletes about our planning and how we're preparing for it and what is the purpose of CAC age group and how it helps our program. That's positive. And another positive is uh, World Youth Championships is going to be in Ukraine. We have at this moment uh, three athletes that have qualified. It is, uh, of course, Cairo Scraters, uh, Justin Donawal, and Tahira Butterfield, if I got it right. The moms may shoot me, but it's uh, Tahira Butterfield. The sprinter? The sprinter. Yeah, Tahira they've, Butterfield. They've, they've qualified for World Youth. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're going to be uh, watching a close eye with the progression of the athletes. You may have qualified, but the most important thing is, and that's what I'm going to meet with the coaches, hopefully, in it, uh, yes, definitely going to meet with the coaches in the next three weeks. Uh, making sure that athletes stay on point. Uh, like I said, we use Carifta as a stepping stone, and now we're moving on to the next goal, and the next goal is this summer. So for some of the athletes, it's going to be a long summer, so be prepared for that, uh, which is kind of positive because it keeps the athletes not only busy, but it teaches them how to uh, prepare. Uh, our purpose as a national program is to prepare the athletes not only for college, but also for the international scene. So. Uh, a lot of athletes are going to be uh, more busy than they've ever been. So we're going to have to take this time together with the coaching staff to prepare the athletes and teach them how to keep yourself occupied in a long, drawn-up, busy summer. And of course, in August, we have uh, Junior Pan Ams. So it's, it's, it's like I said, it's going to be a long, drawn-out summer, but it's fun. Now, last year, we had the national uh, championships, mm -hmm. and we brought in, or we saw the introduction of a lot of our overseas mm -hmm. um, athletes mm -hmm. that we don't normally get to see yeah. compete on local soil. Yeah. Can we see similar to that? Again exactly this year? the same thing. We're looking at uh, bringing in athletes to uh, uh, basically beef up the the competitiveness in different events where we feel our athletes needed. Uh, looking at maybe bringing somebody for the one and two, uh, bringing somebody for the eight hundred. Uh, and 1500s and a little bit longer distances and uh, I want to take this opportunity right now to call out to all of the middle long distance uh, athletes that we have I mean I see tons of people preparing for 24th of May uh, it doesn't stop for you after 24th of May you're more than welcome to come and run the 1500 and the 3000 and 5000 at the national championships this summer so anybody who's out there who feels like hey I can I can do this register for the national championships and come out and and, and give uh, a Juma Mache, uh, a Daniel Oatley, and a Nathan, uh, Nathaniel um, Hartwick. Mm -hmm. Give these guys a challenge. Uh, these guys are, are, are coming back from Carifton and Fresco. I know, I see people out there every day running around, mm -hmm. running on the streets, and coming to the track bugging me to jump on the track. Can I train? So I would like for you to come out. I'm challenging you to come out and, and, and take part in the national championships because you don't come on the track just to say okay I got speed work test yourself on the track so that's my challenge to the general public who who feels like uh, they don't get the opportunity they feel they need it and I would feel these guys would like to be challenged so now we often hear of scholarships for various other sports and, and we see track and field every once in a while getting some what are the positives in performing well on a regular basis uh, in track and field it is athletic scholarship uh, for some folks, education is not for everyone. Uh, every once in a while, you do have these, uh, I call them freaks of nature, such so as Usain Bolt, who are so good that they're able to get a professional contract. And uh, basically, I'm glad you asked the question because it's been hidden in my head the last uh, few weeks, is that our program is simple. We have eight years to develop an athlete. So that's from eight to 18. That's almost 10 years to develop an athlete. And that develops an athlete from primary school, high school. 
it's our job as a national program is to prepare that athlete not only physically and mentally but to equip them with the correct tools to go out there to represent not only Bermuda but also themselves so let's say if a kid who happens to be a freak of nature and he or she just might be the next great thing then we have to make sure that that individual is equipped and let's say hypothetically a shoe company comes along and offers them a professional contract then we're going to have to situate that athlete in a professional environment that's some of the opportunities that are available uh, due to the situation we're in right now we have almost a huge percentage of our athletes going off to college so we're going to have to equip them so we're going to start now uh, with the kids who are 15 and 16 start now testing them with the SAT scores making sure that their, their, their grades are up to power I myself I take it personally I go around to schools and I ask the teachers how the kids doing uh, parents call me and this is Troy my son or my daughter's not doing well could you uh, step in and play an important role and and it's, it's not just like going in as, 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 as a national coach or a performance director I go in there because I know that it takes more than the physical ability the physical ability is quite easy but it's the mental uh, discipline that is needed and if you accomplish something in a, in a, in a, in a subject that you're not good in it's a sure wins for you when you step on a track because you know you can do it so that's my that's our role as a national program is we have to teach the equip the athlete of all the equip tools that they need to go out there and defend themselves in the world is basically it now donna cap um saying that it was your brain child or it's your comment that got the <laughs> women in sports expo here and the other night we listened to lisa leslie and many of the other speakers on saturday speak about keeping young women involved in sports. Mm -hmm. um, let me get your take on how possibly this could be a case to keep them involved because we see the numbers drop off. I think we are involved. I think if you, you were there Friday night as long as myself, uh, the women that were there, they, they got a fire lit under their butt. Mm -hmm. And they got, hey, I believe uh, when when Brandman posted a question of the Article 9, it, it caused uh, women in powerful positions to look at themselves differently. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, let's be honest, a woman is a minority and a black man is a minority. Mm -hmm. So we have one thing in common, that's why we fall in love with each other. Right. All right. So let's take that love. <laughs> no, but let's take that and make something positive from it. Right. And this is what I got from that on our Friday night is uh, the minority is not a negative uh, thing it's a positive thing because you know where you are so you know where you can go the sky's the limit mm -hmm. so i i'm glad that uh, lisa leslie touched on the, the topics that affect us most and uh i think one thing we don't realize you know we do have powerful women here we do have women who do great things mm -hmm. we just don't see it enough right and uh we, we we need to have that more often and and yeah i was raised by a strong beautiful black woman right. and who had a strong black man at our side so that's why i advocated <laughs> that's why i sat there with a huge grin on my face and clapping my hands at every every comment that she uh, uh brought up it pretty much touched home with us so i see i i i see the positive effect of it uh coming out of this and it's 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 sort of a virus that's been spread around now and um, yeah, it's, 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 it's good that Donna is, as the president of the National Athletic Association, she is in the spotlight. And she was able to use this Women in Conference not only for Bermuda, but also for the NETCAC region. Mm -hmm. So we had other presidents and high officials, females from all over the Caribbean, who finally got a chance to come together to network to figure out what needs to be done next. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been bombarded with emails from Donna now, but this is what I need, this is what I need, I want you to do it. It's says, okay, I'm doing it. So it's, it's no problem. I, I, I can only see it getting better. And it's, it's, it's an encouragement to us uh, as a country because we've never been in something like this. Right. And, and, and I know people are hungry for more. So we're looking at preparing for the next two years and also for next year's so Women in Sports Conference. Right. Well, one thing's for sure, um, I recorded all of Lisa's speech, and matter of fact, everyone's speech, and I've taken time, I've done two parts of Lisa's speech, so mm -hmm. the general public, and the response that I've seen people watching the videos of what Lisa was saying mm -hmm. um, in part one and part two, yeah. should be warming to anybody that, yes. that, that was there, and yeah. those that missed it. Um, they could always go back and click on the yeah, replay. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, we look forward to a bumper summer. A very um, good summer. Moving forward with, with, especially women in sports. Yes, um, yes. 
I, I do have to, I was kind of disappointed, the fact that uh, media didn't show up for to, to get a chance to hear that message. But we do have other means. I mean, you're here today talking right. to me, and this is going to be aired. Right. And uh, I just challenge people that to go on the website. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of your website, there's always a comment. Right. Uh, please leave comments. Right. And even if it's criticism, criticism means that you're criticizing me, that means you like me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love criticism. <laughs> that means I'm doing something, so please, you know, right. um, uh, uh, just get on the website and right. use, let, let's use the, the, the avenues that we have right now to mm. get the message across mm. because, yeah, okay, a lot of the people who should have been there were not there. Right. But I guarantee you now that they're going to make sure that they're there the next time yes, around. Yes, indeed. And uh, they're going to keep a watchful eye on us to see what happens because that's pretty much mostly the effect. This is the first time this ever happened. Right. Um, people's like, okay, women in sports, what are they talking about? But we know Bermuda, and that's the luxury part of being in an island so small that word of the mouth is the best, best um, ad advertisement you can have. Yes, yeah. And so together with word of mouth and with the Facebook uh, community and the internet community, it's it's going to help itself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I said, I, I know people is going to go back and watch this because I, 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 yeah, I beg them, particularly particularly the uh, young mothers out there mm -hmm. and young women out there. School, female school teachers, anybody, uh, even males who work with young females, I, I encourage you to, to, to have your class or have, get together and watch this. I know girls have book club parties. Right. And have, then have a look at a look at a, a, a women in sports uh, a Lisa Leslie party right. and get together and discuss that and please yeah, send the comments to you right. because the more comments you have, the more people we have discussing things right. Right. and who knows, something may come out of that. Indeed. You know, but Indeed. like I said, I, I, I we have to keep uh, as much as people challenge yourself or challenge me, mm -hmm. we have to keep challenging them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's it's a two way knowledge street. is power, and information yeah, is. is is just the key. Yes, I know. I, I one of the most part, the, one of the most touching parts for me was listening to Brenwin talk about um, the effect that the bombing during the Boston Marathon had on people in her school who yeah. had just moved away yeah. from that area where yeah. they saw the guy. Yeah. And decided to move, yeah. and within 25 uh, seconds, it's, it's it was happened. it was yeah. worn. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they're emotionally affected. So she's now had to switch her focus from being this teacher and to kind of getting into counselorship, and they have counselors at yeah. the school. And yeah. So, forth. Yeah. so sharing those information things is, is just part of being together. I think our role, if you like your comment about Brenwin, uh your role is bigger than what is the the job description yes. may say mm -hmm. and uh if 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 you look at Bremen, she's an athletic director so she's in charge of the athletic program but also uh that's one of the fun things about uh our western society particularly this side you don't have that too much in europe uh, that your responsibility as a role model mm -hmm. is bigger than 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 it actually is right. so uh the kind of role that she has of being a public figure you don't you don't like it sometimes but when people really need you that's when you realize wow I that's the reason why I'm in this position because mm -hmm. I'm strong enough to handle this and to uh, extend my left hand and my right hand over here to help these other people up to rise and and, and put them in a safe and safe safe environment or a place or a community so that they're able to to help themselves mm -hmm. and that's that's what I get uh, yeah I, I try to stay in contact with Brenwin as much as possible because uh, she understands the position that I'm in mm -hmm. so she can help me uh, get over difficult situations and dealing with situations and being a public figure right. in this situation, which is which is it is a tough call, but yeah, you ask for it, so you must well accept your responsibility that comes with your job. Right. Yeah. Well, we look forward to getting back with you as we get closer to these uh, other championships that will be going on and when teams announce and so forth. Okay. So we look forward to talking. Thank to you. you. We're keeping you in the loop. Appreciate yeah. that. Okay. Thank you for stopping by.